Hello, my PVC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Uh, today, our word is going to come from 2 Kings chapter 5, in the first verse, uh, chapter, or verse 1 through verse 14, is what we're really kind of looking at. We're not going to cover all that text. There's a lot of text to cover. So I'm just going to kind of synopsize for you here a little bit what's going on. Hopefully, you'll remember the story of Naaman. Uh, Naaman, a mighty man of valor for the king of Syria, a, a warrior, basically, if you would, uh, who had leprosy. And uh, during one of his conquests, they had taken a a little girl, uh, a servant girl, back to his home. And when the servant girl recognized that Naaman had leprosy, she she had basically said to her maid, uh, to the maid, uh, to the wife of Naaman, in essence, said, "Hey, if only Naaman could go down to Samaria, down to my land, to Israel, to see the prophet there, that he might be healed of his leprosy." So when this got back to the king of Syria, the king of Syria basically sent a note down uh, to the king of Israel, saying, "Hey, I'm sending my servant Naaman down to you, and you're going to heal him of leprosy." Now, this kind of upset the king of Israel. He's like, am I God? Who am I that I can heal people? And, and in essence, what he rent his clothes, was all upset. He's like, why is the king of Syria seeking occasion for it against me to kill me, so to speak? And uh, Elisha, the prophet, heard about this. And so Elisha sends to the king and says, hey, when Naaman comes, send him to me. And, uh, and so he says, you know, have him come down to me and we'll see what God will do here, basically. So this is where we're going to pick it up at now in uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9. And I want to read down to the end of the chapter, verse 14. And we'll come back and talk about something that I see so instructive in this, in our lives with Jesus Christ in this story. It says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9, it says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and, and, and I'm, I, I'm not good at him. Abana and Farpar, -par, -par, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean? And he went, he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. So basically, here's the deal. So Naaman comes down to Elijah's house. He stands at Elijah's house and, uh, and, and at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah doesn't even come out to him. Elijah doesn't even meet the man. He just sends his servants to the door and says, hey, go tell him to wash in the Jordan seven times and he will be clean. So Naaman's wrath. Here he is, a mighty man of valor, a big man on campus, so to speak. Right. Uh, well, he doesn't even come out and talk to me. He should come over out and talk to me at the very least. And and uh, and, and, and what 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 are the rivers in Israel better than the rivers in Damascus? Shouldn't I go wash in Damascus and be healed? And so he's kind of like all arrogant, for lack of better terms, and kind of puffing his chest up. And then he gets the wise counsel from his servants. And I love how his servant said this. He said, the servant said, speaking to him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? Now, here's why I say this is our life with Christ. Christ calls upon us to do the simplest thing sometimes, which really, in all honesty, is very simple. It's what? To believe, to trust, to have faith, however you want to look at this. He calls us to wait upon him, to trust in him, to know that he's in control. But for some reason, we act like he's got to have some big thing going on, some mighty thing for us to do. And if he doesn't have a mighty thing for us to do, it's like we don't have all these works to do and all this stuff to do for our salvation and for, 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 for the kingdom. Then, well, he must not be God. There's so many people who act like this. It's like, I've got to be doing something big. When in reality, sometimes all he's asking us to do is have us to have the faith just to go down to the Jordan <laughs> to go down into the Jordan. Sorry, I laughed because my wife literally looked over the bull, showed it to Jaden, stuck her tongue out like you can lick out the bull if you want to, and uh, I and and she did it did it like a dog would. You know, kind of, anyway, sorry, totally off subject here. I apologize, guys. <laughs> but the point of the matter is, is that sometimes I think in our life with Christ, what we have to do, have a chance to do, is we overcomplicate it. We think it should be something bigger and better and more grandiose. Then sometimes it's just that simple. Go wash in the Jordan seven times and be clean. It's really that simple. 
he just gives us a simple instruction and tells us what to do. If we follow his instructions, we would have. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Jesus says that if we would walk by faith and not by sight, what? That we could have peace. We could have peace if we walk like that. But so many of us have to know, like we have to know what's coming down the road and see what the future might hold. When he tells us, hey, here's the deal. You don't need to know what the future holds. You need to know who holds the future. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Trust me. I've got this under control. And if we would do that, how different our lives might look. Maybe we might get cleansed of that disease of anxiety or that disease of, uh, of worry or that disease of stress or that disease of all these things like this that take away the joy of the Lord from us if we would actually just go and wash in the Jordan seven times and be clean. So maybe we need to stop being namens and puffing our chest out and get angry because God's not asking us to do something big. He's asking us to do something simple. He's saying, just go do this. Have I not commanded thee? And that servant says, if he would have given you something big, you would have done it. So why wouldn't you do something little when he asked you to do that? And really, that's a great question for all of us. If he's given us the simplest of instructions, instead of the complicated things, why wouldn't we desire to follow those things? Well, I hope this encourages you. I encourage you to go wash the seven times in the Jordan, so to speak, <laughs> and be cleansed. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this. <laughs>